Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for July 8th, 2024. I um, hope everyone had a wonderful holiday and a great weekend. It's been really crazy here, but all of the um, all of the company, all the visitors are gone and um, ready for another wild and crazy week in the market. However, yesterday while working on my lawnmower, I hurt my back pretty badly. And um, so bear with me. I'm going to be a little bit slow this morning. There will be no blog today because it took me forever to get dressed and get into my office this morning. So let's take a look at um, what happened overnight and see if we can, um, well, just see how things are going here today. I know futures were looking a little bit lower last night. They popped into the positive and now they are back in the red here just a little bit this morning with the Dow futures looking just slightly lower, S&P 500 and NASDAQ futures right at the moment looking just a little bit lower. Now that being said, we've got European markets, they're green, uh, they're green across the board. Um, I think they're celebrating a little bit. Um, the, um, the worry in the French election has now passed and um, they seem to be celebrating just a little bit over there with green across the board in Europe. That being said, we had Asian markets down across the board last night and substantially so with the Hong Kong um, you know, tech sector down 1.55%, Shanghai falling once again uh, below that psychological 3000 level in Shanghai as um, um, we saw Japan's real wages fall for the 26th straight month and um, um, obviously that's raising some concerns um, in the Asian markets and um, some red across the board there. If we take a look in the oil sector we've had pretty interesting uh, price action moves here in um, oil obviously we, we've got the worry of the uh, Middle East situation um, and that has spiked things up we've got the concern that um, our economy is slowing enough that we're seeing builds in supplies and then we've got this hurricane coming in to focus coming in th uh, to the Gulf that could certainly have some impacts on those oil prices as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on all of this this morning, but right now we've got oil down 85 cents this morning and a barrel, uh, Brent being down 67 cents a barrel. And natural gas is floating around the flat line here today. If we take a look at um, our uh, gold um, situation here, well, GLD is looking a little bit lower here this morning. It shot up nicely the last couple trading days here in the market, but pulling back this morning, $16.50 an ounce. Silver's a little bit lower. Copper's lower, platinum and palladium are also lower but take a look at palladium my goodness what a rally here in palladium breaking through the downtrend so this pullback in here if it can hold this trend break i'd keep an eye on a palladium and then let's take a look at our cryptos well cryptos are um, just slightly lower here this morning we've got um, if we look at like bito this morning um, it's showing a bounce but right now we've got crypto um crypt uh, excuse me bitcoin there we go um down um just ever so slightly and, and now it just ticked up ever so slightly so a little bit of green across the board in those cryptos this morning so keep an eye on that part of the reason that's happening here is we've got a possible gap down in the US dollar here this morning and one of the reasons that's occurring is we're continuing to see those bond yields drift back we've got um, the two-year bonds at 4.6 year 63 percent this morning the 10-year bonds at 4.30 percent and the 30-year bonds at 4.49 percent so what does all that mean for today well how about we settle in 
let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain a little bit of information about how we might want to approach the market for today. Remember, we want to shake off that bias and we want to be looking at these markets very, very critically um, for what could occur in the market, both bullish, bearish, or sideways. Well, one of the things we can see here on the diamonds is we've got this bear, uh, excuse me, bullish lean here to this after breaking this downtrend, pushing on through here to the upside. But notice we've been struggling in here. And part of the reason is we just really haven't had enough market breadth to really get us any kind of enthusiasm. And a question that I have been asking folks and, and seeing a lot of is that whatever they're buying, unless it's in the big techs, um, um, we're not getting much for follow through here on those stocks. So be really kind of careful here. We are moving in an upside trend, but we're kind of lethargic at the moment, which puts us in that situation where if the bulls really were to step up, they could step up in a big way. Now, breaking through here, would be um, the first step breaking through there and then we'll start looking for these resistance levels above and then of course if we can break back above here then we'll start looking out here for that opportunity to test all-time highs however in the same um, uh, because we have been so lethargic if the bears were to find inspiration then look for a pretty solid push here if that were to occur now um, Goldman Sachs has been warning that after the fourth to start reducing the warning their clients anymore anyway to reduce their positions for a potential sell-off I have no idea if they're correct but they have been warning their clients of that so watch carefully because if the bears were to push you can see breaking down in here we might find a little support right there then we're going to start testing this support which would be fairly critical if we were to drop below there i would guess there'd be some fear uh, start to come up here in the market not huge but start to come up and then uh, breaking down below there as you can see we can find some support levels in here but we'd probably start coming back toward this lower level here, see whether or not we can hold on to that trend. Now, if we take a look at our SPY, there's certainly nothing here in the SPY that shows fear. But once again, from Goldman Sachs, uh, they have suggested that um, the last three days of run to the upside have been totally supported by retail buyers which is really interesting to me because we're in a very small group of stocks that's making that move. So the chase is on here. We'll want to watch that pretty carefully because if those bears were to come in, the CTAs have been, those are the um, automatic trading systems out there on the, on the market. Um, they could start selling because they are pretty much at max levels here in the market. So watch that carefully. But right now, the only thing you can look at this chart as is, is extremely bullish. But I'd be really careful with the chase in here. Um, a lot of our, um, this has obviously been led just by a handful of tech giants. And we'll want to watch that pretty closely. So blue skies above here, new record highs. It looks like we're going to open up possibly up here near root new record highs this morning. So watch that carefully now any kind of a pullback in here we'd start testing some of these support levels here in the chart and my worry is if we start to pull back there's going to be a rush for the door all at the same time there'll be a lot of folks wanting to take profits and get out of the way quick so watch carefully because we have that potential of some pretty big moves here now breaking down below this support here in the chart then we would really start to show some worry and breaking some substantially lower here in the SPY. So watch that carefully. Um, it's going to be 
really determining whether or not the bulls or bears are really going to have the energy here in the market. And we may have to wait for that for several more days by the time we get through the end of this week um, um, to see what those new inflation numbers are. Now, if we take a look at our QQQ, our QQQ also the very same thing, extremely bullish, new record highs, every reason to believe we could start uh, continue to move up in that pattern but if we find those bears coming into play and if this is true what Goldman says this is only supported by retail traders right now if the CTAs were to start for fine reason to start selling this could move quickly and I would expect that there would be a big rush um, everyone trying to protect their profits and get out of the way quick so um, once we stretch like this, we will always want to watch for that possibility of that ugly pullback. And if we were to pull back into here and bounce off of there, no worries, no problems. But if we were to break that level, then we're probably looking down into here. And then beyond that point, we really start to add some worry or concern in the market. And then once again, if we take a look at our Russell, there is nothing bullish here about the Russell. Um, remember diamonds and uh, the Russell lack a little bit of the techs, but diamonds has those three tech giants now that dominate that index. Right in here though, IWM doesn't get the benefit of any of those tech giants and we continue to see this downtrend. Pretty ugly chart. Doesn't mean we can't bounce in here. So if those bulls find inspiration, let's look to see if we can push up through some of these areas here. Let's start looking at some of these high levels in here and then even pushing into this next level of price resistance. But if the bears find inspiration here, well, we can start to see Breaking down below here, we'll start looking at these next areas to the downside and then maybe even pushing back pretty hard. Let's take a look at our VIX. When we look at that VIX on such a low um, breadth of the market, well, we're just sticking right around here near those bottoms. No fear is showing up here in the market. Um, and if Goldman is right, and retail is the one that uh, pushed the market up in the last three days, we'll want to keep an eye on that because I think fear would come in pretty quickly if um, we suddenly started to see a sell. Now, looking across here, we got that downtrend in here. I've uh, marked this one many times before. That downtrend in here, we're trying to hold this price support. If the bears find any inspiration at all and we start to push up, that's worrisome. But what becomes much more worrisome is if we hold any kind of a higher low. That's where the worry will, will come in for me. Um, if the bulls continue to find this inspiration and continue to um, show um, this uber confidence in the market, then no reason to believe that we can't reverse and start coming back down and breaking and making new lows here, new recent lows in the VIX. Our T2122 indicator, as you can see, um, pulled back here on um, Friday in that trade, just um, sliding back a little bit, more stocks selling than going up, and we continue to be in this range bound zone here in T2122 with that uh, breadth, and we'll look at that in just a second, but with that breadth being so weak, this probably, this choppiness shouldn't be a major surprise. Now, if we take a look at here, if the bulls can find inspiration, we certainly have plenty of upside opportunity and we've um, got plenty of downside opportunity as well um, in the chart if the bears were to find inspiration. One thing you might want to note is we're below the 50% area here. Um, we've had for a long time more stocks selling than actually going up. Selling or going sideways, well, we've been lifted by just a handful of tech sector stocks. If we take a look at our um, T2108, 
T2108 also faded back here on Friday just a little bit. Um, nothing terrible here. We've still got a price support in this chart. So if the bulls can find inspiration, well, then certainly we could perk on up here, see if we can test some of these next areas of resistance. But if the bears were to find inspiration and break through that support, that's where we might see a little bit of worry coming in. Keeping in mind, only 33% of the stocks holding above their 40-day moving average is not exactly the bullish case that we're getting uh, when we look at those indexes, the SPY and the QQQ. And if we take a look at our T2107 percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average, you can see that also faded back, slipped just below 50% here in that of stocks holding above their 200-day moving average. So we'll have to keep a pretty close eye on that. If we were to break down here through some of these support levels, probably raise a little bit of concern. If the bulls can find inspiration, we need to break through this resistance up here and uh, show some confidence in holding above 50% of stocks on that 200-day moving average. And here's that major cul culprit, um, T2101 is our market breadth and you can see our breadth is incredibly weak and with so many stocks in their blackout period the majority of stocks in their blackout period we can really see that opportunity how breadth can remain weak here for a while so be careful um, um, chasing in a lot of trades here in the market because they're not showing that ability to follow through because we just don't have that much momentum. Now it's gonna be really easy from here to see momentum pick up and we can have that momentum pick up and move up here on a bullish wave or a bearish wave. So kind of keep that in mind. If the bears were to step in and this starts rising, be prepared to have a plan to protect yourself here in the market. Let's take a look at um, our earnings, excuse me, our economic calendar here for today. In our economic calendar, there's almost nothing going on here. We've got a couple of uh, bill auctions here, a three month, a six month. There's going to be a consumer credit report. Keep an eye on that. As we move into Tuesday, still pretty light. We've got an NFIB small business optimism. We've got Fed speakers, including Jerome Powell, that will be in here. A couple bond auctions here and a Bauman speaking at the end of the day. If you take a look at Wednesday, normal mortgage applications, wholesale prices, petroleum status, a couple more bond auctions, a couple more Fed speakers. And then um, Thursday is where the uh, volatility is likely to creep up here in the market. We're going to get our next reading on CPI, jobless claims. We've got uh, natural gas in there. We're going to have several Fed speakers, a 30-year bond auction, treasury statement, and Fed balance sheet as normal. So keep an eye right here. That's what everyone's going to be thinking about. And then, of course, the PPI comes in after that on Friday and consumer sentiment and a Baker Hughes rig count in here. So watch these end of week. That's where the action's probably going to be. And don't be too surprised with um, the blackout period and very little um, inspiration here um, on those earnings fronts that we could have a very choppy week of price action. Let's take a look at um, our um, earnings calendar here for today and our earnings calendar well guys we just really don't have much going on here today um, there's only one notable for today um, GBX will be reporting today so keep an eye on that and um, this is before the open so keep an eye there um, nothing else of consequence reporting today to provide that bull or bear inspiration here in the market so with that everyone how about we take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today but before we do that if you could do me that quick favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on youtube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i post a video and if you find these 
these videos to be useful or helpful, well, do me that favor and that would be click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to grow about as much as anything else. So thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly appreciate it and all the kind comments. I really, really appreciate that. You guys are awesome. Also, for those of you who share these videos out on your social media feed helps an awful lot. And a big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link just below the title of the video. Thank you very much, everyone. I truly, truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at um, some of these charts. And remember, folks, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful in this market and make sure that you have a plan to protect yourself if those bears were to come in because we are such a thinly traded market right now uh, with le on the leadership side of things that if those start to sell, we could have some big price moves to the downside all at once. So make sure you have a plan. Uh, to protect yourself. First off, let's take a look at um, some of the things here that are kind of interesting. If we take a look at the, our financials, financials have been trying to make this move, but we've heard so many conflicting stories about some real trouble that could be forming here in our banks. And we've been rallying up here trying to push higher, but there are some clues, maybe some trouble starting to form on the horizon. Took a look at WFC in here, possible failure here at price resistance in the chart. Watch that carefully. If we start to see any trouble in those banks and we know that they went through the stress tests and they, we know that the government said everything is great, but even um, um, uh, Jamie Dimon came out and said, no, it would be worse than what they reported if that were the case. And then on the regional bank side, this has just been really interesting with all of the commercial real estate problems that they have and major debt that these banks are holding. We've been rallying these to the upside, but notice we caught a little bit of resistance right here Watch that carefully. If this were to start to roll over here, that could have some really big impacts to market sentiment if we start to see trouble uh, brewing in those banks. Now, I can't tell you that that's going to occur, and I certainly wouldn't want to predict that, but um, I would be watching carefully this price action for clues. Now, take a look at what's happening here in our precious metals. Let's take a look at gold. Gold has made this big resurgence in here, and we do have that possibility that this could end up in a head and shoulders topping pattern in here. So watch that carefully. We got that little bit of pullback here today coming on. If that holds this upside trend, and believe me, I love my gold. I don't want to see this come down. But um, at the same time, I have to respect what the price action is saying. So if we pull back and we were to hold this trend or support in here, then we could really see those bulls step in and push this on up. But watch for that fade. If it weakens too much in here, that could also be a signal for us here in the market. We're certainly seeing our dollar showing a little bit of weakness here this morning. It is trying to pop up as the morning goes on but watch that carefully here in the US dollar as well. That being said, let's take a look at GDX. Now GDX, a nice move up here, breaking through resistance, getting that little bit of fade. You can also see that possibility up here of that inverted head and shoulders pattern coming. But if this can hold some support and trend in here, in that chart, I would watch for that next opportunity there in GDX. Pretty interesting chart. Um, I've been mentioning um, silver uh, doing the same thing. If we take a look at that palladium, palladium very, very, in, whoops, better get that to a daily chart. Palladium, very, very interesting in that chart. You can see pulling back into this support here. Um, I think that is worth paying attention to. If we can hold that trend, hold that upside uh, trend here, downtrend trend, upside trend, we've got that triple whammy of potential support in here. Keep an eye on that. If that were to hold, look for that opportunity for that to move on higher. Um, 
take a look at soybeans here as well. Soybeans uh, breaking this downtrend, at least slipping out from underneath that downtrend. A um, little bit of a resting consolidation may come into here. If that holds, look for that opportunity in soybeans as well um, when you're looking at commodity prices. Um, let's take a look at a few other places here in the market. Um, when we take a look at retail, um, Wally World, my goodness, really strong here, surging on Friday, pushing up high, all-time highs here in the market. Um, watch that carefully here. Every reason to believe that could move on higher here um, in the chart, but we're really loving some of these big retail stocks. Um, if we take a look at Costco, big surge there on Friday on Costco, breaking through new record highs here in Costco. Once again, every reason to believe that could continue with some enthusiasm. Let's take a look at what's going on in the drug area of the market. Um, when we take a look at uh, Pfizer, Pfizer has been, really been struggling in here. A lot of the drug makers have been struggling. A little bit of an upside trend. Been watching this kind of closely. If this could hold in here, then there is that opportunity that can push on through. But boy, when we take a look at um, some of these, they are in pretty ugly positions. MRNA, following this downtrend and kind of consolidating this move out here, I would watch for the possibility if those bears engage here, um, MRNA could continue in this downtrend. So watch that closely. Um, Merck, Merck um, rallied up pretty nicely coming into some price resistance here in the chart. Keep an eye on that. If it can break through, great. But if we fail here again, that could be a little bit of a problem here. Whoops, that's not even Merck. Okay, there we go, there's Merck. That's what I was thinking, because I don't hadn't remembered it rallying up here like that. And as you can see, starting to show that failure pattern in here where we've broken this little upside trend. I would watch that carefully um, for that. So there's quite a few uh, things in that drug area that's showing lots and lots of weakness. But one that is not is Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly, really, really strong. Their new Alzheimer's drug out. Of course, they've been hitting on all cylinders on their um, weight loss drugs. So looking really good here in Eli Lilly. So we've got this mix of things going on, kind of like we do in banks and kind of like we do in uh, some um, oil sector. Um, speaking of that oil sector, uh, pulling back here, as you can see, possible lower high could be forming in here on the chart. Despite the fact that we had a little bit of this inverted head and shoulders pattern, kind of pushing us back to the upside, starting to see that fade here, but we still have stocks looking really good like ConocoPhillips, possible inverted head and shoulders if that can hold look for that opportunity to the upside but there is so much of a mix in here i would be really really careful um, with um, over trading the oil sector uh, particularly if we start to see that bear come in to the market um, these could move sharply lower quick so keep an eye on those so there's a few things for you to pay attention to today apologize everyone um, i'm struggling here with quite a bit of pain so um, i'm moving very oddly here as i'm trying to move around here on my desk apologize um, if this seemed a little bit more disjointed than normal but i want to wish you all the very very best today thank you so much for being here um, um, i will see you right back here bright and early tuesday morning and of course as always i wish you a very successful day in trading. Take care.